Hey guys, Jules here. Hope everybody's doing well. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Notice I didn't say shalom, Shabbat. I'll tell you why in a minute. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Father God, for dreams, visions, words of knowledge. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, for leading us and guiding us. Father, I ask that you take this video to those that need to see it. And I praise you and I thank you, Lord. And I bind all those evil tongues. All those evil tongues that would speak out against your word, Lord, against your Rima words, Father. I bind them in the name of Jesus. We slice them off with the sword of the spirit. Just like David sliced off that principality with the with the double a double edged sword. Thank you, Father, for that. We just love you, Lord, and we praise you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I ask. Amen. Guys, how are you guys doing? God bless you. Um, the team and I are still, we're still in Kentucky and, um, we're waiting on God to give us direction. And he just actually gave us a, a Rima word this morning at 3.23 AM and said that it's coming there. There's a change coming and he's getting ready to move us somewhere. So we're excited about that. <clears throat> so we just can't wait. So we're just waiting for the Holy Spirit to give us more guidance and direction and we're letting the Holy Spirit handle that. So, um, guys, all the scriptures will be placed in the description box. And um, that way you can do your own Bible study. And I, you know, God said that his word is a ministering angel. And I, I definitely um, advise that you get into his word. But today we're going to be talking about the keys to escape. The key to escape. And um, I'm sharing some some Bible verses that the Lord has shared with me through this week. And also I am giving you, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you five messages um, from the 22nd through the 27th, I think it was 28th, that the Lord has shared with me. And um, <clears throat> now sometimes they speak of the ministry. They sometimes they speak of me. So hopefully, hopefully you can get over that. Uh, but this is just God speaking to me through my dreams. And, um, I'm sharing that, but hey, I want to remind you guys, we have another fasting session coming up on Monday and Monday through Wednesday. Um, and then Thursday morning, you would break fast with communion. It's a water fast only, no meds, just water only. And this is divine fullness for your heart. A seven day fast is divine completeness. And a 14 day fast is divine completeness in a double portion. So praise God, right? God, man, and you can actually go a 21 and 40 day fast, right? If you're, if you think you're up for that, but, um, but, but the fast is so God is telling us that so many people are cleansing and so many people are getting their hearts ready. So praise God. But he's saying there's, there's still a couple more left. There's still a couple more left. Now he wants to be pulled in. He wants to be pulled in for this so we can, so we can make spiritual ascension, right? So let's get on with it. Um, listen, um, Open Eyes of Heart appreciates all those that continue to give to us. You support us in so many ways, and we appreciate that. Um, you know, just with fuel and, and groceries and um, different things like that, right? Uh, um, also, you know, propane gas and things like this. So it's, it's a blessing. We just thank you, everyone. There's five adults here, so as you can imagine. Um, God bless you. Thank you for that. Um, now today's message is, do you have the key to escape? Escape what? The coming judgment that is just weeks away. Not even, not even, not even months away anymore. It's weeks away. And this is what the Lord is saying to us. But, you know, it's God's timing. It's God's timing. You have to understand that it's God's timing. He's in charge of the time. Heaven is another time dimension. You know, yeah, it says in the Bible that uh, a day to God is is a thousand years to us. So keep that in mind, right? But I want to take you to Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. Again, I'll put all these scriptures in the description box. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. And the law is God's word. Isaiah 65, 2. I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that's not good according to their own thoughts. 
And so I want to take you from there, from those scriptures. I want to take you to a dream, a, a message that the Lord gave me, dream message that the Lord gave me on 422. And it starts off with my son at the gathering. And I've got some things underlined here. I want to kind of go back and point those things out. But at the gathering, you will be without agenda for the church who is steering their own destiny and unregenerate. But soon they will cross into the Holy Spirit stream and be a powerful ministry. He's talking about the whole church as, as a whole. And the church will be strong with emotive words and be like one who is like God. And then this is this is this next sentence is what why I I named the the, the video today of what I did. My son, there is a deadline and time is running out. Who is like God to escape? That's what he asked me. He asked me that. Who is like God to escape? He's saying, who has has, has taken up their cross and, and crucified their flesh so that Christ could be in them and they could be in Christ and be like God? Because that's what God is saying. Who is like God to escape? Guys, it's time to new, move out of your carnal ways. When you are carnal you can't accept the deeper thing the deeper meanings of god of god's word in first corinthians chapters one through three it takes us through all the all the carnal things you know paul is speaking to us about the carnal things right in first corinthians chapter two verse 14 but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned you've got to start putting your mind on the things of heaven not the things of earth. You've got to move away from here. You've got to start meditating on heaven and on God and on the temple of heaven. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 through 20, let no one deceive himself, for anyone among you seems to be wise in this age. Let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So um, I wanted to go back to the first dream that I had just shared with you, the first message, and, and just kind of highlight some things. The gathering without mm -hmm. agenda. And what the Lord is talking about here mm -hmm. is the gathering is revival. That's what he's been talking to us about for some time. We thought it was, We thought it was going to be a year ago, but we weren't ready for it. And um, God wanted to take us through the, the refinement, right? Silver and gold. And he wanted to take us from silver to gold, right? And um, But the gathering will be without agenda. What's, what's re Without agenda means that the Holy Spirit is going to guide the, the, the services. So, you know, today you walk into a church, you, you know, they uh, have a greeting, they, they sing some songs, they have to take up the offering, and then, and then there's a word, right? The Holy Spirit is saying no. No, it's going to be without agenda. And so if you can't get over this new process of the new church rising, the new church that's going to rise, and the old church that we know today is coming down, the walls are coming down, God's bringing them down. But there's a new church rising, and this new church that's rising is going to be without agenda. It's going to be without agenda. It's going to be led by the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So here's another message the Lord gave me on 426. 426. This is a message of direction and warning, my son. We, um, weak worship will bring spiritual warfare in the future. So as things ramp up and more demonic spirits come to earth, fallen angels come to earth. Yeah, you might think, well, okay, that's that's crazy talk. Really? Really? No, it's it's happening. It's happening, brothers and sisters. It's happening. You watch. You stay with me. You'll see it. You'll start to see it. You'll start to see more. I just saw a, a video someone sent to me, a, brother, a sister in, in Germany just sent to me, about uh, a brother in, in France who's talking about, uh, he has a testimony how the, the, the fallen angels are coming, are coming. And so this is God's judgment. God is wanting you to turn, to face him, to, to press in, to, to crucify your flesh. He's wanting you to do this. And this is one of the keys to spiritual ascension. This is one of the keys to escape. So the Lord says, 
um, he goes on to say in this message, you are waiting for the sojourner and pilgrim, Jules. The sojourner and the pilgrim will have victory because he's talking to me. You have the voice of the Father. They will repent and be moving into the Spirit, and they will be coming to God from your speaking platform. He's talking about revival. There will be a celebration, and you will have victory over the fleshy man. Praise God. And God, statutes and judgments against sin will bring true praise and worship and cause many to spiritually be strengthened. And this will happen in the future right in front of you. In the public eye, you will have a successful gathering of heavenly worshipers and, and the praise and worship will bring victory. And I think that's that's the end of that message. Now, what is the Lord saying here about the sojourner and the pilgrim? Well, he's talking about people that are on a journey, on a journey, on the journey of life, on the journey to find him. Or or they, 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 they may not know it, but they're on a journey to find him. All right. Also, this is also speaking about a subculture, people who are homeless. And you may have a home today, but very shortly, you will not have a home most likely. If, if the earthquake doesn't get it, the massive earthquake doesn't get it, if, if the tsunami doesn't get it, um, then the government's going to take it. And uh, you probably heard of these routes. There's already bills. There's already um, bills in Congress that's already been approved that, uh, that are saying that um, you will you will want for nothing. You will you will have a paycheck, and 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 that's how it's going to work, right? And everybody will, if if you if you if you accept their way, their bill. If you accept their law, then you will have a place to live. But if you do not, so if you you know if you do not uh, accept them MOTB, if you know what I mean, then most likely you're not going to have a home if you do not accept the MOTB. You can think about that, what that is. Statutes and judgments against sin. So what God is saying here, statutes and judgments. So the Lord is saying, by his word of God, by his laws, okay, that and his judgments, they're coming against sin, the sin of the world, right? And this is going to turn people to true praise and worship. And many to be spiritually strengthened. And that's what's next. That's when you start to press into God, you get spiritually strengthened, right? Amen. And then the Lord says in the last line, the gathering of heavenly worshipers and the praise and worship will bring victory. So the gathering of heavenly worshipers. So people, this is the gathering is talking about revival again. But the gathering is going to bring people who are sheep without a shepherd, but they're going to turn into heavenly worshipers heavenly worshipers mean they're they're looking to heaven they're looking to god right they're looking to god for the next what's next lord what's next how how do we get to god that's what they're saying how do we get to god how do we get to god in john chapter 11 verses 9 through 10 jesus answered are there not 12 hours in the day if anyone walks in the day he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world but if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Is he talking about daytime and nighttime? Eh, for those that not really hear with spiritual ears. But he's talking about those who walk in sin is walking in the dark. You're walking in the dark. You can't see ahead of you. You can't see what's going on. You cannot hear. Another message on 426. My son. I am giving you prophetic understanding that you are being brought into line with other ministries. Now, the night before I had this dream, I asked the Lord if he would give me confirmation about the creation calendar. And this is what he gave me that day. And so, yes, this is I feel like this is confirmation. The Lord is saying the creation calendar is the is our path, <laughs> which brings me to the next topic is that's why I did not say Shabbat Shalom. Because today is not the Sabbath. The Sabbath was on Wednesday, the true Sabbath. And this is by God's true creation calendar. And I actually was talking to Bonnie. And I said, Bonnie, it'd be nice if we could put uh, God's day. Because he he goes by, he don't go by Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He goes by day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, and so, and so on and so forth. 
And I said, it'd be nice if we could put it on there that we could have the the Gregorian date, right? So she heard the Holy Spirit say, do not put the Gregorian date on my calendar. So we're preparing that for you guys. We're preparing that um, so that we're also going to explain it to you guys. But I am going to put a link into a video. I've already shared this video, but I'm going to put the link in the in the description box so that you can go check out the the teaching about um, about the creation calendar yourself. And it's it's awesome. And we feel that we are in line. And this is where God has taken His people, His believers, to the creation calendar. So start getting that in your in your mind. Okay, this is a move of God. This is a move of the Spirit taking us to the creation calendar. And so God is saying, I'm bringing you into line with other ministries. So then it says, my son, this is prophetic insight about the prophetic office. You are independent and separate and in the spirit. <laughs> so what the Lord is saying here is we are not part of any denomination. And he doesn't want us to be part of any de denomination. <clears throat> and this is a, <clears throat> I'm sorry. And this is Ephesians chapter four, where the, where there's, where there's so many doctrines that have been brought together by di different denominations, right? And everybody's got their own think thinking of how 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 a relationship with God should be. But God said, "No, I want you to go by my word, by my word." So, so the Lord sa says, "You are giving leadership as a prophetic and strong apostolic ministry, helping others with re revelation and illumination, and are a guide to the right way for those without Christ." Providing spiritual food. If you don't know what an apostolic ministry is, it's one that is starting something new. It's leading something. It, you know, Moses had an apostolic ministry, believe it or not. Paul had an apostolic ministry. Jesus had an apostolic ministry. My son, you will be given a powerful word from God for those being worked on in the place of preparation who are not walking in the spirit and without Christ and their souls are lost because they are being manipulated by a fleshly man and not operating, operating in faith. My son, your heart is sensitive to the spirit of God and have spiritual authority. Receiving your heart, obedience, understanding, there will be punishment of evil doers. There will be punishment of evil doers. My son, you are the voice of the Father for a multitude. Your heart is sensitive to the Spirit of God. You have spiritual authority over the fleshly man who is not operating in faith. And they are not releasing sin at the cross. You hear, this is what the Lord is saying to me about many of those who are watching today. My son, open eyes of heart is a large ministry and is capturing hearts. You will be blessed for it with double portion. And I just wanted to kind of go back to this message real quick and say that the Lord is saying you're, that many are going to be worked on in the place of preparation. So where are they going to be worked on? What is this place? The place is the gathering, which also equals revival. Okay. This is what's going to happen after, after spiritual ascension, after the major judgment hits, which I think is massive earthquakes, uh, tsunamis, um, three days of darkness, um, there could be, we're also being being told by other prophetic people that the ozone is going to open, um, that this is going to bring the fallen angels in, many more, more many more of those, uh, many demonic spirits in. Um, and the place of preparation, pre preparation for what? Preparation for the next rapture, brothers and sisters, that's what that is. So what will you be doing at revival? See, this is what I've been trying to tell you. I've been trying to tell you, get yourself ready now on this side of judgment, because when judgment comes, you're going to be in judgment. You're going to be the ones being worked on. And those that are pressing in now are going to be the leaders. And that's what I've been talking to you about many, 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 many videos, communications that that now is the time to press in. You still have time. I just had a young man, 21 years old, and I was counseling him and talking to him, and he said, uh, I just did a two, three day fast. And, and I said, well, there's only a three day fast. There's a seven day fast. There's a 14 day fast. And I sent him a testimony from a sister, a young sister who just did a seven day fast on her own. I don't tell people what the fast.
They choose on their own. The Holy Spirit speaks to them or puts it in their heart. This young 21-year-old today is his seventh day fast, and he's doing great. He's doing great. And he, he told me this morning, he said, <laughs> praise God. He said, I don't, I kind of forgot that I was fasting. I'm like, wow, if you forget that you're fasting, that's a gift. <laughs> praise God. So the Lord is wanting you to fast now. He's wanting you to press in. And fasting weekly is, is Luke chapter 9, verse 23. It's a daily commitment, guys. Reading your word, reading God's word, pressing in by prayer and worshiping from the heart. That is that is a daily commitment. Daily commitment. So is your heart a mirror of God's word? Meaning, do you believe everything that's in God's word? Do you believe it? Or is there some things like, well, I think people are born gay. Sorry. <clears throat> that's a zonk, okay? No, that's not God's word. In 1 John 1, 6, it says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. In James 1, 23, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. In James 1, 26, if anyone among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, oh man, oh man, that's many of you, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless, meaning your faith is useless. On, on 427, God gave me another message. He says, my son, you will be captive and confined, and you are perceiving this in your heart. The ministry and new church will have victory, and you will have strength. So what the Lord is talking about there, being captive and confined, he's saying that at revival, on this property that the Lord has been showing me for over a year now, we will be captive and confined to that property. Why? Why do you think that is? I have a video way back that talks about barricades. Okay. A couple of years ago, the Lord showed me that there will be many barricades. Counties, cities, states will be barricaded. You will not be able to go state to state in the United States. You will not be able to go county to county in the United States. Many of you work in another county. Many of you work in another state. That is coming, brothers and sisters. That is coming. You will not be able to leave your city. Why? Most likely, from what I see, from what see, I only see in part. This is a, a 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's a short chapter. Check it out. There's two verses in there, two or three verses that speak about we only prophesy in part. We only see only a little sliver. It's all God's showing us, right? So I'm, I'm making an assumption when I say this is martial law. This is martial law that's coming. Let's go on to the next message here the Lord has given me. My son, this is prophetic insight. The sunlit meadow will be mighty. I'm going to tell you what that is. And this is next in time for you. You will give leadership and be a godly example. You will have strong emotive words and great voice with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, this sunlit meadow is that property I've been talking to you about. It's a meadow. It's beautiful. It has a lake on it. This is where God's saying that he wants us to go and have revival. He wants us to go and have revival. And this is where the glory of God is going to come down, brothers and sisters. The glory of God is coming down. My son, you will be independent and separate. So he says it again to me. And in the spirit, with a very cheerful heart. <laughs> because I will have come back from the spiritual ascension. This is all the things the Lord is telling me. My son, at revival, you will be in fellowship and alignment with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And you will and, and will give you spiritual insight. That is basically me holding on to your hand, and I can I can tell your dream right off the right off by by holding your hand. That's all that's one of the examples of spiritual insight that the Lord has been given me. In James 1, verses 12 through 15, our our loving God under trials. And in, in verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. That's the key, my brothers and sisters. That's how you get the crown of life. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away 
by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Sin equals death. Brothers and sisters, that is the three stages of temptation right there. What I just gave you first. Let's see, what is this? Uh, James chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. Those are the three stages of temptation. In Romans chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, I want to talk to you about how your goal in your Christian walk is to kill the old man, the flesh, the flesh man. That's that's not going to kill someone else. No, it's killing the, the, the old man within you, the man of flesh in you. You have to kill that old man. In verse 6, it says, Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. So when your old man is dead, you are freed from sin. Brothers and sisters, this is sanctification moving into glorification. You saved, sanctified, and you are glorified. Glorified by who? By none other than God. The spiritual ascension is glorification. In 427, the Lord gave me another message. Message of prophecy. There will be an enclosure on the hill, <laughs> such as a sheep pen. You, do you get it? With woods nearby. My son, you will be one who works hard at the enclosure. Now I'm going to stop right there and just talk a little bit about what this is, what the Lord is talking here. The Lord is talking about there an enclosure on the hill. So at this property, there's a little bit of a hilltop there. And the Lord has been telling me that we're going to have a, a revival tent there. And he's calling it an enclosure. And, and it's going to be a sheep pen, sheep without a shepherd or the sheep. We are sheep, right? We are sheep. And and he's saying there's woods nearby. And there's, there is woods. I mean, God is just describing this, this place amazingly. Um, so it goes on soon. My son, soon you will have spiritual ascension. And this is what lies ahead for a change of heart. You get it? And there will receive riches and on honor. Open eyes of heart prophetic ministry is awaiting ministry for the gathering place. And this is revival. Your life as a storybook, this is the book of life, has a childhood worship in your heart. You will soon be glorified. God is gracious. God has favored you with the grace of God. You will have authority and dominion, and you are moving into spiritual adulthood. Brothers and sisters, there's a lot in this message. He's talking about spiritual ascension. This is what lies ahead. And he says, those that have a change of heart, they will receive riches and honor. What is the change of heart? Many of you have been in church for, for years. You've been in the mega churches for years. I was in the mega church, but God said, come out of the mega church. And he wants you to have a change of heart. What is the change of heart? He wants you to go from lukewarm to being on fire. How do you get on fire? You get on fire by praying every day. You get on fire by worshiping every day. And these are from your heart. This is coming from your heart. And you get on fire by reading God's word at least five chapters a day. Read them twice so that you get it absorbed. Okay. and. And, and, and you fast weekly. You fast weekly, brothers and sisters. That's how you get a change of heart. And believe me, it's a narrow path. It's a very narrow path. The gathering place. This is revival. He's talking about revival. See, see, as time evolves, right? As time goes on and the clock, the clock clicks on, we are getting closer and closer to the spiritual ascension, which we come back for the revival. And people... He's saying that people are going to, their hearts are going to be crushed. Why? Why is your, say it. Why is your heart going to be crushed? Your heart is going to be crushed, brothers and sisters, because you've missed the spiritual ascension. You've missed the first rapture. You've missed it. In Romans chapter 6, verse 20 through 23. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. 
in Christ Jesus, our God. Excuse me. Guys, when you when you fast, I get the hiccups. When you fast, that is good fruit. If you complete a three-day fast, that is good fruit. If you complete a seven-day fast, that is good fruit. That is that is divine completeness. In 2 Corinthians verse 5 through 7 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. So you have to kind of do all these things in the faith. Man, I have a great story with that, but I don't want to, I'm going to save it for later. Um, in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the son of God. That's right. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Guys, I am not trying to boast or anything like this, but what the, the scripture is talking about is killing the old man and living in Christ. In 2 Corinthians verse five, uh, chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteous of God in him. And guys, who are you trying to come? Who are you trying to become? You're trying to become the chosen the, the elite, the, the, the remnant, you're trying to become, that's God's daughters and sons, sons and daughters, same thing. I want to ask you today, when's the last time that you communicated with God while you were on your knees, that you paid homage to Father God? When's the last time that you prayed from your heart to God, sincerely, talk to him? When's the last time that you worshiped from your heart to God. When's the last time that you that you read God's word? If it wasn't today, if it wasn't yesterday, you're not in relationship with him, brothers and sisters. You've got to confess your sins. You've got to seek Jesus for healing and not the medications, not the doctors. Seek Jesus for healing. Will you get on your knees and ask for forgiveness? Will you go to that quiet place? Brothers and sisters, Jesus is waiting for you with open arms. Will you pray today? Will you worship today? Will you commune with Christ today by reading his word? And will you occasionally fast? God bless you guys. Love you guys very much. Jules out.